the idea is that we're here, we interact with each other, we make choices. And by the choices we make, we create an environment for ourselves. And then we have to live in that environment. It's like, you know, you, you make your bed, now you have to sleep in it. Or those are, you know, the shoes you created, now you have to walk in them. It's one of those things. So the system has us here. The system does not manipulate our free will. The system cannot say, all right, people, I'll give you free will as long as you do what I want you to do. Yeah, no wars, no disagreements, you know, nobody gets angry because that's not nice. So you're not allowed to do that. But other than that, you have free will. Free will to do what I want you to do is not free will. So free will allows people to make poor choices and do unpleasant things to hurt other people. Free will allows for things like war, if that's what the people do. Now, there's all sorts of people involved in wars. There's the aggressor who has you know, created the war, and then there's the people who have the war run over them, who really maybe weren't were on any side. They just happened to live in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, there's a, there's a large number of those that uh, don't really have a side in the war. The only side they have is trying to survive under very harsh circumstances. Well, if that happens in your neighborhood, then there's lessons in there for you. And if it ends up that that kills you, then you get a new life someplace else. So it's just part of what we do and how we are. And a lot of things affect us in different ways. You know, we can be minding our business, driving our car within the speed limit, going down the road, and somebody who's drunk on a, in a truck on the other side of the road comes across and runs right over us and we all die. And maybe we and our whole family dies. That's unfortunate. Okay. The drunk made a bad choice. The person driving their car didn't necessarily make a bad choice. They were just going to see grandma, you know, with the kids. But those things happen. And that's part of what, you know, creates all the learning opportunities here. Learning opportunities are created by diversity. If everything were the same, then we wouldn't learn much. That's what was wrong with that big chat room. The reason the system had to create this virtual reality to begin with is it was too much sameness. There wasn't a lot of real significant consequences to what people did or thought or intended. So we get in this place and there's, <laughs> there's very strong consequences everywhere. Everything we do almost has Strong consequences, the choices we make change our lives and change the lives of other people. So that's that stir that keeps this pot well stirred. Sameness doesn't happen. It's constantly everything's changing. And what just happens to happen to you has a strong component of randomness in it. You just happen to be in the car at the wrong place at the wrong time. And everything changes. You know, the whole family disappears. Well, that doesn't happen real often. If it did, they'd build bigger barriers or uh, sturdier cars or, uh, you know, cars that you couldn't start if you were drunk. They'd do more about it. So our culture only does as much as it feels like it needs to do. And if it's in the margins, the culture pretty much ignores it. That's part of being in a in a culture with what you know well in this country it's almost 400 million people so if what happens to you is down in the is down in the weeds all way off in the margins then generally there's not much that anything's going to happen about it it just is it's like that's the way it is living here now you know you have to deal with it if it's happening to you know, hundreds of thousands of people, well, then the culture says, whoa, that's a bad thing. We need to fix that. And it'll start making laws or making policies or making rules to try to fix that problem. So we have laws and rules, international laws and rules. But if somebody wants to make war, they just, they just violate them. And they just run over somebody else just because they can, because they want to, because they think there's something in it for them. But to give you a little good news on the upside of that, you know, talking about wars, because I don't want you to leave depressed. And that is that, you know, we've grown up a lot. You know, I told you that this evolution thing 
the more you evolve, the easier it is to evolve more. So the curve kind of goes slow at first and then gets faster. But we're on that knee of the curve where it's getting faster. We're not down in that slow part. I mean, we went for millennia after millennia after millennia with hardly anything changing 100,000 years ago, 200,000 years ago. It was really, really slow. But it's not that slow anymore. And you notice we're in a world now where when you just start a war because you want to grab somebody else's stuff, that's not seen in a very good light. You go back to what, the 1800s, right in the middle of colonialism, where all the Western powers, mostly Europe then, was running out and grabbing land and killing people and saying, this is mine now. And all you people used to live here, now you work for me. That was happening all over. And what was the general attitude? Well, you know, hey, the survival of the fittest and we're more fit. So, you know, we survive and you don't. And if we're big enough and strong enough to take it, then it's ours. That was the attitude. There wasn't any general attitude of, oh, that's not nice. We shouldn't go out and do that to those people and subjugate them and steal their resources. And that's not a nice thing to do. So that was what? Just 1800s. What? A couple of centuries ago. Just a couple of centuries ago, that attitude was okay. And most of the people in Europe thought it was fine. They were big and they were powerful. Why shouldn't they go out and help the poor little peasants some other place, you know, build railroads and come into this century? They actually thought that they were the deliverers of technology and modernness. So they were not just ripping people off. They were helping them out, helping them grow up into the, into the modern age. Well, of course, that people will justify anything that they do <laughs> with stories like that. They'll always justify some nasty thing that they want by making it in their mind something that is good and not evil. So just look at that progress, right? Cup, just two centuries. Now, for millennia after millennia after millennia, nothing changed. It was warlords, warlords and tribes. Stayed that way for a long time. Now, 1800s to the 1900s, now we're in the early part of the 2000s, and Russia decides it wants something, so it's just going to go out and grab it by force. And what they're going to find is that it's not the 1800s anymore. The world doesn't support that anymore. The people and other governments don't say, well, of course, you're strong. They're not strong. You can take it if you want. That's the way it is. Well, the strong do that to the weak. That's just the nature of things. Perfectly all right. We're not there anymore. Just two centuries, and most people look at that and say, how awful. Why do they think they have to do that? That's wrong, you see? So it's a different world now. And because of that, because we've grown up that much in two, dec in two uh, centuries, two or three centuries, because of that, it'll probably be true that the perpetrators of this war will find that in the long run, it was a terrible mistake. That in the end, they're going to have less, not more. It's just, that's the nature of the way this works. They're going to learn a lesson that this is no longer the 1800s, and that sort of thing is not looked on favorably. And they will be shunned, and, and they will be pariah, and they will be ruining their image, their sense of worth, their sense of value to the world. All of that is going to start to tank. They'll be seen as the problem nation. On the bright side of this, you have to look at the fact that we've changed. It's, it's a different place. And yeah, they can do it, and they can get away with it. But give this a, a decade to play out. And you will find that they're going to be worse off for it, not better off. It's not like, oh, yeah, we captured a lot of resources. We captured a lot of manpower. We captured more territory. Yay for us. We're going to be bigger and stronger now. No, it won't work that way because the world doesn't support it anymore. And it will probably be the beginning of the end of Putin because he's the one that drove this thing. So I suspect he just started his own demise by doing this because i think his citizens probably don't like it either you know it all works out we are growing up 
this is a kinder, gentler, better place. It's not just that there's this evil, nasty stuff in the world, but the system lets us grow up. And then when you have, what, 7, 7 billion people or so out of the 8 billion people who are saying, that's not right, that's not good. Well, you have 7 billion people who are going to grow up a little bit. They've just seen the difference between good and evil there, whereas in 1800s, they couldn't see that. Now they can. So a whole lot of people will take a step to the side of realizing that that's bad behavior, unacceptable behavior, who otherwise eh, never even thought about it. That helps us grow up just a little more, you see. So this kind of thing ends up actually pushing our growth forward, not dragging it backward. Whereas back in the 1800s, it just drug everything backwards because people weren't ready yet to see the problem. So they didn't see the problem. There was no problem. Now there is a problem. And the more people see the problem, the more they grow up and say, yeah, that sort of thing's a problem. They become more aware of it. So by doing that now, they actually are going to help this evolution speed up just a little bit because they are now the best bad example of how to be. And we learn, we learn from bad examples. We learn from good examples too, but we also learn from bad examples. So that's the positive thing. If you look at this and you say the system just lets it play out the way it plays out. People have free will. And when they, they learn from the consequences. All right, now we, all of us here, we're not suffering those consequences of that war. But we see them. We feel them. We're watching all the pictures. We're all connected. You see, back in the 1800s, nobody at home saw that war. Nobody at the home saw people being bombed and that kind of stuff. That was all in a far place far, far away, out of mind and out of sight, so nobody really cared much. Not the case anymore. We're all plugged in. We all see that. That makes us grow up faster than we could have grown up back when it was in a land far, far away where, where nobody saw the horrors of it, except the people who were there. So you see, it's, it's just part of the process of us growing up. So it's not like that's a horrible thing and somehow the LCS should step in and stop it. Well, that's not the way it works. We don't grow up that way. We grow up by having to deal with the, with the, what? With the, with the mess that we create from our own bad choices. That's our, that's our stick, you know, is that we do things that are wrong, we see that they're wrong, and we change. That's our way out. So in, you know, in the big picture, this probably will aid our evolution rather than drag it backwards very far because it's out of time. It's the wrong time. Two, three hundred years ago, oh, it would have played wonderfully. And it did play wonderfully. You know, the Russia already did that. Took up all those countries once, you know, and everybody said, fine, eh? no problem. You can have them. So then the big problem was that the big countries would end up fighting over who's going to get the little countries. You know, but it's not so much like that anymore. We figure those little countries are there. They deserve to be there and they have a right to be there. And running over them is not a good thing. Just like people. Little people have a right to be little people and to be where they are and to do what they're doing and running over them just because you can is not a good thing. So it's a lesson that we will learn and we learn it by seeing it, by being a part of it, by connecting to it. So that's the good news. It's not just bad news. It's part of our evolution. It's the way things work. And the thing that I was going to get that Ash O talked about that I was going to pull into it too. She makes the point of, you know, sometimes you just want to get out there and fix things. Sometimes you just feel the need to go out and grab somebody by the throat and shake them. And tell them to stop. And where do we draw this line? Where is it that we, the forces of good, can gain power so that we can force other people to be nice or to not be so mean or so evil or nasty or self-centered. Well, 
that she didn't say it that way, but that's basically one of her one of her questions is this thing about accepting the world the way it is, accepting people the way they are, accepting that this you know we're all learning, but it's slow, and we see all these terrible things, and we want to go out and do something. We want to slap somebody, you know. We want to get physical. We want to go, you know, stop it. This isn't appropriate behavior. You're not being nice, you know, but what does that do? Could we do that? You know, is that something? Should all the good people in the world rise up and slap down all the bad people in the world? No, that won't help. People don't learn by being slapped. When you slap somebody, it just makes them mad. It makes them angry. They double down on whatever dysfunction they have. Now they have it twice as much. That isn't helpful. You can't fix things that way. What you're doing by the good people rising up and battling the bad people and getting rid of them, what you're doing is just trying to fix the symptoms. The symptoms of war and predatory corporations and you know people trying to rip other people off and take advantage of people and steal their stuff all of that stuff happens because people are of pretty low quality of consciousness that's why it happens now you can take your army of the good and make the evil sit down and be quiet but have has anybody learned anything yes they've learned one thing power is the only way to settle a problem. The good has to overpower the evil. So power is what really solves problems. You solve problems through force, by keeping those bad guys from doing bad things. We force them to straighten up. And that is what makes this a better place. No, that doesn't. What that does, even given that all these are good people and they are slapping only bad people, all that does is make everybody behave better. But it's not about behavior. It's about changing who you are and growing up. So yes, you have an army of good that will slap anybody who does something that isn't nice. So people will stop doing things that aren't nice because they don't want to get slapped. But are they growing up any? No, not growing up a bit. And are the people who are the good people who are forcing the bad people to be nice, are they growing up? No, they're not growing up either. They're just learning that might makes right. Force has its way. And of course, some of those bad people eventually will come back with more force. And it'll just be fighting and struggle and fighting and no end to that. The only way to end it is to solve the problem, not to try to fix the results of the problem, not to try to fix the symptoms but to fix the problem. The problem is a low level of quality amongst human beings. That's the problem. And if you fix that problem, then the getting nasty people to be nice solves itself. There won't be any nasty people if you fix that problem. It'll go away. People will care about others. People will see bigger pictures. People won't be so self-centered and fearful. So that's the thing. We need to solve the problem, not try to suppress the symptoms. Because forcing the symptoms to be suppressed, that is the, the, the symptoms of nastiness, will just create more trouble. Because once that power of good sits there for a while, there's going to be somebody going to come along and say, hmm, I'd like to run that. I'd like to be the emperor here. And that force for good then eventually turns out to be a force for evil. Because what is that absolute power? Corrupts absolutely, they say. So any place you have power, you're going to have not nice people wanting to grab it and take it over. By what? Appearing to be nice for a while? Then changing? Whatever. So you don't solve anything by going over and slapping the bad guys. It just makes everything worse. So how can you make humanity grow up? You can't make anybody grow up but yourself. So what is the most optimal thing you can do for world peace and for happiness and getting rid of wars and hunger and nastiness all around? Grow up. That's it.
raise your own quality of consciousness because that will help others grow up and those others will help others grow up. So that's what you can do. And you can't do anything any more meaningful than that. That's your biggest contribution. You can't force anybody else to grow up. And if you do, you'll make them worse. And you will be the one pushing them, forcing them to be nice like you want them to be. Can't, that doesn't work. So that's the answer to Ash O, who, who has been being just a nice person trying to get along and let everybody be, but she just wants to get out there sometimes and slap some people because they need to be slapped. <laughs> and yes, I can, I can, you know, I can see her coming to that conclusion. You know, you kind of feel like that. You know, you just like the grab somebody by the throat and shake them sometimes. So maybe see, make them see that they're wrong. Well, that doesn't work. They won't see that they're wrong. They'll see that you're wrong and they will redouble their own behavior. And now you just have a fight and that fight never ends because everybody who is what in a position to bully others thinks they're right. All those people in, in the colonial times back in the 1800s in Europe, they all thought they were right. They were doing good deeds. They were helping people, uh, you know, come into the future. It was their right to go grab things that they had the power to grab. Let the poor, ignorant peasants see how, you know, real people live. We'll build them a railroad. We'll do other things like that. So, anyhow, that's, that's the good news, Marlo. On the back of the bad news, yes, there's war. Yes, there's greedy people. Yes, there's nastiness almost everywhere you look. People out for themselves. Self-centeredness is everywhere. But that's because that's the way we are. And we just need to grow up. And the only way you can do that is to grow yourself up and hope somebody else grows themselves up too. But you see, I'm working the, on it. I'm yeah, working on it. <laughs> but the pressure mounts. You see, yeah. the, pre the pressure now on Putin and Russia is to change. So when other people grow up, it puts pressure on, on everybody to grow up. See, that's the thing. So it's not just you, but you and the rest of the world now says just taking over other people's countries is not nice. And we'd like to play nice now in 2022. We'd rather play nice. So that puts pressure on others to do better. And now we're going to see that pressure applied and see what happens. And I give it a 99% probability that when all the dust settles and it's cleared, Russia and Putin will have learned a very tough lesson and they won't like the results of the lesson. It won't be a great win for them. It'll be just the opposite. I and MBT events hope you liked this video. We now have well over a thousand hours of free video on this user-friendly ad-free YouTube channel. Though these videos are free to our viewers, they represent many thousands of hours in production and editing and many thousands of dollars invested in video and audio equipment along with the required computers and software to store and process the raw video into finished products. So far, all of this content has been funded directly out of our own pockets. Be assured, we will always continue to do what we can. It's our life, our purpose, a labor of love that we will continue to pursue as best we can. However, those pockets are not as deep as they used to be. Thus, we are now seeking to augment our resources with support from our viewers. If you find something of significant value in our videos, please consider supporting their production through our newly created Patreon account or through a one-time donation. The links are in the description below. Thank you.